Hi, in this video, we're going to be, this series of videos, we're going to be working through a GCSE paper. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, then compare your solutions. Each of the videos is going to be about 20, 30 minutes or so. It should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment. I'll come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Hi, in this particular video we're going to be working through the uh, Foundation Tier June 2017 paper from Excel, and it's paper 2. In the previous video we completed through to question number 16. In this video we can start from question number 17 onwards. Okay, so here we are at question number 17 and Neymar rolls the bias dice 200 times and it could land on either a one two, three, four, five, or six. So the first thing I need to do is work out the estimate that it will land on the number one. Now, all of these numbers will add up to one, which is certain to land on one of the particular numbers. So basically, if I add this, 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 and this together, what I actually get is 0 0.69. So one takeaway from 0 0.69 equals 0 0.31. So therefore, the probability of it landing on one is going to be 0.31. Okay, so if uh, Neymar rolls the dice 200 times, then to land on a number 1, it's going to be 0 0.31 multiplied by 200, and that's going to give us 62 times it'll land on a 1. And then a number 3, well, the probability of landing on a number 3 is 0 0.18. Again, multiply that by 200, and that's going to give us 36 times. Add those two together, and we're going to get 98 times that it will land on either a 1 or or a three. Okay, hope that's okay for you. Let me know in the comments. If you need any more type of work to do with these sorts of questions, please do let me know and I've got some playlists I can point you towards. Okay, let's have a look then at question number 18, which is quite wordy and quite difficult to kind of work our way through, but the best thing really would be to stop the video and have a go at this particular question. However, one of the key issues with this is that we've got three quarters of the children had seats in the stores and 117 had seats in the circles, which is equal to a quarter of the children that are actually at the theatre. Okay, so that's the first thing I would look at, because if a quarter of the children is going to equal 117, equals 117, then four quarters, in other words, all the children all together, is going to equal to 117 multiplied by 4, which is 468. So I know there's actually 468 students children within the theatre. So let's have a look at the ratio. Now you recall right at the very beginning it says the ratio of adults to children was 5 to 2. So I can write that out as adults to children is 5 to 2. Now there aren't two children in the theatre, we've just worked out there's actually 468. In other words, that's going to multiply this by 234. So if I do exactly the same with the adults, multiply by 234, that's going to give us 1170 adults in the theatre. Okay, so therefore the total of people within the theatre is going to be 1170 plus 468 and therefore in total there are 1638 people altogether. Now the exact the question is this Saturday were there more than 60% of the seats filled because there's actually 2600 seats altogether. Well 60% of 2,600 equals 1,560. However, there were more. There's actually 1,638 seats filled. So therefore, the answer is yes, uh, more than 60%. So now you could work it out as a percentage if you wanted to. It would be 1,638 out of 200. And I think it works out about 63%. But in this particular case, it doesn't really matter, providing you show the difference between between the actual number of seats and the number of seats that they say. Okay, 
Let's move on then to question number 19, which is a relatively straightforward cross-sectional kind of front and side elevation. Um, the key issue here is that um, you've got this scale, which is two centimeters to one meter. So basically on the grid, rather than uh, drawing two meters, I'm going to draw four centimeters. This would be also four centimeters. And then the width of the actual unit it would be two centimeters. Okay, so I can now translate that, bearing in mind when looking at the front, what I'm actually going to see is something that's going to shape a little bit like this. So I've got these four centimeters down, as I've just drawn out, and four centimeters along, and then there would be one centimeter and then a sloping line connecting the two like that. I'm sorry about my drawing. Uh, if you download the actual answers from three minute maths, then I use a, a ruler with those ones. <laughs> okay, so that's the front elevation. The side elevation, I remember side elevation is basically looking at it from the side. Now, as we mentioned before, it's going to be two centimeters across, but obviously it's also that four centimeters high. So that would then be the side elevation. And that would be the answer to this particular question. OK, let's move on then to question number 20. I'm going to aim for about 20 to 30 minutes on this particular video and we'll see how we get on with answering all the questions. OK, so 20, again, very wordy. OK, so we've got Oli drove 56 kilometres from Liverpool to Manchester and his average speed was 70 kilometres per hour. So let's have a look at the information that gives us. Well, that means that Liverpool to Manchester, so lift to Manc is going to be speed equals distance divided by time. And what this is going to be allow me to do is to calculate the time it takes because he's got a speed of 70. The distance we know is 56. That's divided by the time. Therefore, if I make time the subject, it's going to be 56 over 70 and that's going to give us 0 0.8. Okay, now we're very careful with this because what that means is 0 0.8 of an hour. So therefore in actual minutes that's going to be 0 0.8 multiplied by 60 because it's of 60 so therefore it's going to be actually he's going to take on his journey 48 minutes to drive from Liverpool to Manchester. OK, so let's have a look then at what we're being asked to do. And it says work out Ollie's average speed to for his total drive from Liverpool to Sheffield. OK, so let's have a look at what's happening now. So we've got Liverpool to Sheffield, lift to Chef. OK, and again, I'm going to write the same formula. Speed equals distance divided by time. OK, so the distance, well, that's going to be 56 plus 61. OK, so that's fairly straightforward. Now, bear in mind, it is a calculator paper, so you should be able to put this directly into your calculator. OK, so the issue here probably is going to, to do with time. So before we said the Liverpool to Manchester was actually 48 minutes. It's this one here. So in order to make this work, we have to use 48 out of 60. Or if you prefer, I could go back to putting 0 0.8. I tend to use this particular method because normally they will then give us um, minutes or hours and minutes and it kind of works every single time if you just make it out of 60 so I've got 75 minutes out of 60 minutes okay it looks a little bit complicated but nothing that a calculator can't cope with and when we feed that into the calculator we're going to get an answer of 57 kilometers per hour OK, now, if you uh, use that particular method, it will always work for you to get that hourly rate of so 57 metres per hour. OK, and then again, there's some more words at the bottom here. Janie drove from Barnsley to York. 
her average speed was that and her average speed was that. If Jenny is correct, what does this tell you about the two parts of the journey if her average speed is found by working out the mean of 80 and 60? So a lot of words going on in that particular question just for a one mark. Okay, but basically what we would say is that the time must be the same between both journeys. Okay, and that would be it for this um, in order to make it so that the average part of the speed is going to be 80 uh, plus 60 divided by 2. Um, okay, hopefully that's okay for you. If you want to throw some numbers in there, we can do that, but it is only one mark on this. Okay, let's move on then to question number 21, which is a similar shape. So things are getting a little bit more challenging now towards the end of this particular paper. We've got about uh, three or four questions to go. So we'll have a go at this question and then we might just leave it at that particular point. Okay, but let's have a look. So with these types of questions, what I normally do is I actually separate everything up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two separate triangles, one of which I'm going to just um, write as AEC, so that should be AEC, and the other of which I'm going to write as, it's not particularly well drawn there, uh, I'm going to write that as B. D, C, because then it allows me to put in the information that I've been given. So the first bit of information I've been given is that E to C is 8.1. And I've also been given that D to C is 5.4. That's good news, because what that will allow us to do is to work out the scale factor. And the way that we do that is that we say that actually if we multiply 5.4 by something, what do we get? Or what, what is that something in order to get to the uh, length of 8.1? So therefore, the scale factor is going to be 8.1 divided by 5.4. It's how many times we multiply 5.4 to get to 8.1, and it's actually going to be 1.5. So that's the scale factor. Which means then it's relatively straightforward to be able to work out the values of the other sides. So the length AE, which we're being asked to work out, AE is going to equal to BD multiplied by 1.5, and that's going to give us an answer of 3.9 centimetres. So this would be 3.9. OK, and then finally, it says that AC, there's right at the bottom of the screen there, AC is 6.5, 6.15 centimetres, work out the length of AB. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the length of AC and then take one away from the other. You'll see what I mean in a minute. This is going to be 6.15. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out BC, and then in order for me to work out AB, which is this bit of the drawing, then I need to take one away from the other. OK, well, again, I can use my scale factor of 1.5. So BC is going to equal to 6.15 divided by 1.5, so therefore AC. BC is going to be equal to 4.1. Now remember that AC is going to equal to 6.15. I'm going to take away BC, which is equal to 4.10. And that's going to give me a length then AB, which is going to equal to 2.05. So therefore, the answer to this particular question is 2.05 centimetres. Now, you need to go back to the original drawing just to make sure you're OK with that particular calculation. And you should get 2.05. OK, so we'll leave this particular section at the end of question number 21 and then in the next video we'll start from question number 22 onwards.